Hello everyone and welcome to Stefan's podcast, the podcast for everything Japanese news and what's going on in my little island. We've got a lot of news stories for you today, so let's jump straight into them. The first big news story to come out of the world is US companies are buying more property in Japan and they are renting it out as like short term rentals for people who are coming over to Japan and living here for like six, seven months on these digital nomad um, visas that you can get or people who are just staying for a year, two years, which is could be good, good in small bits because trying to find an apartment here in Japan is an absolute nightmare. It's, it's ridiculous if you're a foreigner, you have to jump through so many hoops. These guys hopefully are a little bit more lenient and it's easier for US people, UK people, whoever to come over and rent these apartments. They're also set up for digital nomads, so they're fully furnished and they have, you know, desks, the Wi-Fi will hopefully be all set up, all the easy, nice, convenient things you want. The only bad thing about this is we've seen it in so many different countries, London, uh, New York, Los Angeles, wherever there's these heavy amount of tourists, all these companies start buying up plots of land. And then if you live in places like Tokyo, it's more expensive to get an apartment. It's harder to get an apartment if you want to buy one and live there permanently. And you also have to deal with all these tourists coming in and out. So not sure how I feel about this. I really don't like um, companies buying up places that could be houses for people. I mean, you look at London now, try and buy a place in London. It's just ridiculous. The prices are through the roof because of tourists, companies buying houses, and you know, also lots of people living there. But it's it's another thing that you just do not need. I know Barcelona don't like all the tourists who come there. You also have New York. I mean, you name a city, and a lot of companies are buying the land to rent out, which is not good. Very, very bad. Don't like that. I do like that potentially there's a tiny upside in that it could be easier to rent a place. So that would be nice. And they're fully furnished, which is a, a, a good thing if you're a digital nomad. You don't wanna be coming here and having to buy all this different furniture for six, seven months. This is what I tell a lot of people who come here on the teaching program that I'm on. You gotta be careful buying stuff because at the end of the, what, two years, three years, max five years, you have to potentially just throw it all away or you have to give it away. And that, that kind of sucks. It's a lot of money to spend on nice things so you've got to be careful with it i haven't bought too much the the biggest expenses that i've spent here are probably in this room here we've got a green screen behind me lights and uh, a table and i've also bought a cheap sofa but that was only ten thousand yen so not too much literally everything i buy for my house i'm like at some point i've got to throw this away this is not permanent and it is a weird weird mentality to get into living here uh, next news story for you is, we'll go for another Japanese news story, we have got 40% of men in Japan feel awkward at work after taking paternity leave. So I know this is a big thing in Japan, there's a little bit of a stigma, I think it's getting better, that men taking paternity leave, some of the companies don't like it, they kind of see it like you're a little bit lazy, you're using it as an excuse, but you have a legal right to take it. And I think if I have children, oh, I'm absolutely maxing out the paternity leave. You, you should, you only get to experience it, what, once, a couple of times in life? Oh, spend the time with your child, man, you, you got to. That, that is a thing that goes like that. You never get that time back, ever having your first, second, third child. Oh man, you got to, got to do it. So off the respondents, uh, the average person took 42 days off maternity leave. So, and that 42 days, I don't know how they class that in Japan, but you've got to be careful with these 42 days in Japan because in some companies, they will include weekends on that. So you, 42 days in the UK, if I took 42 days off, paternity leave, those would be 42 working days. So that adds up to about two months and a couple of days, right? Depending on bank holidays, whatever. And most of the people who came back said they felt uncomfortable when they returned and it was a little bit awkward, which that also could be, you've been out the office for two months and then coming back, but you know, people treat you differently. They kind of miss you. In the UK, I've never seen this ever with people taking maternity maternity or paternity leave. Once you come back, you're pretty much just as if you didn't, didn't disappear. It might be awkward you getting back into the rhythm of work, you've had a child, 
but we're really we're really good at paternity and maternity leave. I I think I'm not a I'm not a woman, so I've never had to experience it. I also haven't had children, but from what I've seen, most people who go away and come back, everyone wants to see the child. Everyone wants to know what's going on. I've never heard. Um, I haven't heard people had too much problems taking maternity leave, other than a, a little bit of struggle at the beginning. But for the most part, we're very very good. Japan. Not so good with this, but I think absolutely, absolutely. If you get maternity leave, paternity leave, you take every single day that you're entitled to. You're only going to get it once. The Japanese don't think that way, but we have two completely different culture things. The Japanese people love obligation and feel like they should work and do their best, and the other Western side, we're very much like, well, it's what's going on for me, what's best for me, and I've got to take care of my family and everything there. What about what's best for the family, not just best for your obligations? But there you go. Forty percent of people say they feel awkward. Have you have you felt awkward coming here? Let me know. Love to hear it. And next news story for you. We've got a little bit of a weird, very very weird one coming up. Is pufferfish. So everyone who has heard of Japanese food, they may have heard of fugu, the poisonous pufferfish. And it turns out that the poison isn't actually. Inside the fish themselves, the reason they develop this poisonous、uh, skin, liver, whatever is in the poison that kills you, is because of the diet they eat. So Japanese scientists, for the last twenty years, have been making puffer fish that live on a different diet, so they don't develop the poison that they have. And for some reason, only the Japanese would do this. They manage to get these puffer fishes, which don't have the poison in them. Apparently, they're completely free of it. They're great, healthy fish, and they've decided to give them the poison that they don't have to see what happens if they eat the poison. It, only in Japan would they get rid of the problem and then feed them the problem to see what happens to the fish. It, it's a really, really weird story. I have yet to eat fugu yet. Apparently, it's quite expensive. There was that great news story of the elementary school student who became a fugu chef at such a young age. I can't remember the age. I think it was ten or eleven. Ten or eleven, she became the chef. Great, great story. I'm yet to try fugu. I don't know if I would try fugu. It's a bit of a roll of the dice, but everything is a roll of the dice. I'm also not. Not a particular lover of fish. I will say these puffer fish that are the fugu fish. I see them all the time when I go snorkeling. They're they're very、um, they're not hard to find here. They certainly not. But the next news story for you coming out of the big old Japan is oh tourist behavior. So there was a recent survey amongst the Japanese people who.、Um, <laughs> Don't have high opinions of tourists necessarily. A lot of the local people here not a fan of it. I will say the tourists are coming from from a lot of places. It's certainly getting more and more tourists. Even here on my little island, I notice it. I went down to this supermarket today. We have a lot of、um, Korean tourists come because we are so close to Korea, and it's for the first time I've really seen the little town here just busy. Like there's a lot of people walking around.、Um, And I'd say majority, ninety percent of them were Korean, and I was going, "Oh, okay, it's interesting to see them coming back. Nice to see the boats. Hopefully, they'll get some more crossings coming between Korea and here because I want to visit Korea more. But the times here are not overly great if you're working. The times to get the ferry are all during working hours, which is a bit of a pain. But there we go. More tourists are coming here." And over eighty-five percent of Japanese people are wary of tourist behaviour. This is the survey that they've done. Of course, the people who answer these surveys don't always reflect true people in Japan. So, hello. Okay. Well, tell you what. Lesson learned. Make sure you lock your door in Japan. That was weird. I'm a hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent sure someone just opened my front door and then turned around. Very, very weird.、Um, Japan for you. I know that in Japan people think that the ginkan is for like everyone, but very strange that they just didn't ring the doorbell, open the door, and then disappeared. Ooh, Japan! You, you're, you're very odd. Make sure you lock your doors in Japan. Good lord, that was creepy.、Uh, okay, next news story for you. Where was I? Where was I? I was talking about pufferfish. Pufferfish? No, I wasn't talking about pufferfish. I was talking. Oh, bad tourist. 
We're talking about bad tourists here in Japan, and the survey conducted said that seven eighty five percent of people are weary about、um, foreign people coming and using. This was just specifically national parks. And they're weary. They're saying that foreign people don't know how to follow the rules, and that it's going to cause problems. And it's just an interesting thing. They have such a weird love-hate relationship with tourists because Japan desperately needs the money to come in. I think all countries need the money to come in, but they、um, aren't necessarily a fan because our cultures are very different. We we act differently to most Japanese people. You look at you look at a、um, a British. Like a British night out compared to a Japanese one, very, very, very different, very, very different. But there we go.、Um, next news story for you. Oh, we're going to move. I think that's all of my Japanese stories. Yeah, we're going to move outside of Japan now. And interestingly enough, last episode I talked about companies teaching children how to invest their money and what to do with it. And then the next day, the UK came out with this this just funny story, and I was like, oh, this is why you don't. Always trust companies to to run your money for you. So、uh, about ten years ago, the ten twenty years ago, the government was offering like a this weird childhood fund where they gave two hundred and fifty pounds into a bank account to start saving where they were invested. And this person who basically didn't touch the money, it just went into the account and they just let it roll over. Has now turned to the age when they can use it, which I believe is eighteen. Yes, eighteen birthday, so they have some money to set themselves up for life.、Uh, all of this has been eaten by annual charges and the bank's charges for it. So he, they started with the account in. It doesn't have the date here, but it started with the account at two hundred and fifty pounds, and over the years it has been whittled down to all the low, low price of twelve pounds thirty nine. The guy who had the bank account was expecting to, it to have what three hundred pounds, you know, a little bit of in interest over the years, but no, absolutely <laughs> demolished. It is crazy that they've been able to do this, and I just imagine. How many people that these companies have taken money from is just ridiculous. Never, you can't trust two people, and it's companies and the government. Both are just as evil as each other.、Um, yeah, be careful with the companies that you're investing. You've got to watch the stuff like an absolute hawk. You certainly do because they will get these charges whittled down into nothing. It's it's crazy. But I'll link the news story if you want to have a read of it. It's、um, a, a real mess. But the next news story for you is oh, just moving to what's going on here.、Uh, I watched the U.S. elections are coming up. We also have elections here in Japan coming up. I, it's so weird. I have no knowledge of which Japanese parties are running, who's going for it, or what what the good side is, what the bad side is. And considering I read the news most days to find episodes of this podcast,、uh, there's not much information on. Um, the Japanese parties in English. I find it really hard to find news stories, so I can't tell you who I think is good. I can't tell you who I think is bad. It's a bit of a mix. And to be honest, it's nice living in a country where you don't know too much about the politics, and not people, not many people, talk about it here. I really haven't had many discussions about like which which party is good, which party is bad. I hear more about people talk to me about U.S. politics. Than I do anything else. And Donald Trump yesterday went on the Joe Rogan experience. I have watched majority of it. I think I've got so look. I've got about five minutes left of the episode. Some interesting stuff. Donald Trump is very good at、um, talking, and I feel like what he does when he speaks, especially on this program, he goes on these long tangents. And part of that is to kill time so that he can talk about things that he wants to talk about and not have to. Answer any bad questions. Not that Joe Rogan, I don't think, gave him many questions. He just let him like talk, which was good because it's interesting to see a president talk for three hours. I really hope、um, the other Alexa Kamala Harris goes on it because it'd be interesting to watch both of them just talk for two or three hours. Because most of the interviews that I always catch, that you only catch, you know, the highlights, clips here, clips there. You never really know what they're like. And even with this three hours, I don't really know. Much about Trump and his term in office, but it's interesting to watch. Interesting 
for me to watch as someone who likes podcasts, who likes videos, to see how Trump talks, how he handles himself, and eh, interesting. Some of his policies seem okay. Uh, I have no idea. I have no skin in this game. Let me know. What do you think? Who is going to win? My prediction is I have no idea. I don't know much about it. But that's the Trump thing. It was interesting to see him go on Joe Rogan. I liked him talking about um, they're going to start charging China to import maybe cars at higher rates so that they don't have to pay as much tax. I think that's a really interesting thing, if that works, especially to stop uh, all the jobs leaving the US. That's a good idea. I think most countries should have this policy. And it, it was interesting when you think about it, like, oh, yeah, why, why do we always let different countries import so many different things when we could build it ourselves just because it's a lower price not not necessarily good and, you know in the UK we don't have any car manufacturers anymore and the ones that we do have are owned by other people you know we had Mini that's been bought by a German company we had Land Rover also bought by a German company I believe I don't think we have any actually British owned cars suppliers anything anymore which sucks same with our energy I mean EDF is a French company it, we shouldn't be allowed to sell so much of our um, home things over to other countries, I don't think. I think it's particularly bad. There's good things about trade, certainly is. And the European thing of free trade is interesting. It's pretty good. But then you get so many other different countries moving stuff in and then you lose local businesses, which is sad. It's, such a, it's so hard between local business and what you want to keep. Really tough. So that was the Trump thing. I got to watch a little bit of football, the highlights this week. Watford, my team, managed to beat uh, Blackburn. I'll tell you what, that was a lucky, lucky win from the highlights that I watched. I mean, that shot where it deflected off the post two times and didn't go in was ridiculous. And then also one chance that uh, Blackburn had, which is a chip, which just went too high. I was like, oh, I think I could have scored that. So, you know, these things happen. But... Uh, lucky win for Watford, very lucky we got a penalty. I feel like the wins that I've watched from Watford have been more lucky, hard-fought wins than I've watched them going, yeah, Watford did really well there. I mean, that's where they are in the table as well. And we're minus on goal difference, which kind of sucks. I want, want a few more goals and less goals going in. And I want to feel like Watford are, are winning. It's nice to see cleverly such a young manager doing well with Watford. I mean, they're not in any danger zone they've done no worse than older managers have done so that's nice to see I hope they get into the playoffs I don't think they're gonna win first or second this season I think if they are lucky enough to get promoted it will be through the playoffs and I think they're gonna get a low a low playoff set I think they're gonna probably end up finishing around fifth or sixth somewhere around there they're just the way that they're playing at the moment. But who knows? Maybe they can turn around. It's still really early in the season. We're only in October. I think there's only been 12 or 13 games playing. So fingers crossed for Watford. Every year I hope they get promoted. And most years I'm just disappointed. Some years I'm very happy. And then when they do get promoted, they come back down to the Premier League. And that makes me very sad. And I don't like that. And it's not good. <laughs> but there we go. That's the Premier League. And that is everything for this podcast. Thank you very much for watching. I will say this, if you're in Japan, lock your doors because you get creepy people come and open your door and then disappear. Japan for you. What, what a country. What a country. But thank you very much. And I will see you in the next couple of days. And I'm trying to do these podcasts a little bit more regularly. Um, I haven't been as consistent as I want them to be. Part of it has been trying to get use of the green screen. When I do the short videos, it's much easier to use the green screen behind me. And I think the green screen's great. I think it adds a lot more depth to the videos and I want to get better at it. And I've just passed 1,000 subscribers recently. Very happy with that. Most of that is from the short videos, which I like doing. I've got much better at editing them. And it's taken me over 330 videos to feel happy with the shorts. I'm now at a point where I feel like I can do almost what I want when I edit with them. It's still not as good as I want to be editing, but we're getting there slowly, slowly, slowly. It just shows you do something every day, you get a little bit better at it. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and have an absolutely good rest of your week. Goodbye.